And that's just how it works when you are the head of an organization like this. There are many decisions I have to make, and maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but somebody had to make a decision, and I did. Those comments by the now former Alachua County Superintendent just before the board fired her from her position. We have the latest just for you. Plus, a detailed update on the situation in Ukraine. First at 5 starts right now. First at 5, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT First at 5, I'm Samantha Narson. And I'm Sophia Mingoti. Thanks for joining us this evening. We begin tonight with change in Alachua County Public Schools leadership. The Alachua County School Board voted 3-2 to two to remove Superintendent Carly Simon from her position at the board meeting last night. And the views and shares continue to grow on the district's YouTube channel. Close to five hours into the meeting, Simon outlined her successes and presumed failures. Three of the five Alachua County School Board members gave Simon poor annual evaluations. Now, Deputy Superintendent Donna Jones will step up to the role as interim superintendent. That's a monumental amount of leadership changes for some parents in the district. Many noted the lack of stability at the meeting, and some believe she was the district's long-term solution. Others raised bigger concerns about Simon's overall performance. WUFT's Alexis Clevenger has been mulling through this today. She joins us now to tell us about the reaction to the news. Alexis? Yes, I reviewed the hours of footage posted to the YouTube page after viewing it from the comfort of my home Tuesday evening. There was roughly three hours of public comment, and as you all stated, the decision garnered mixed reviews and high emotion. Ms. Russell. Yes. Before the vote, teachers, parents, and board members packed the room and vocalized their thoughts on Carly Simon. When it comes to a change in leadership, it's not what I would like to see at this time. Alachua County Schools teacher Chelsea Bolin wants to keep Simon. But this parent, Brad Gonzalez, who has three children in Alachua County Public Schools, says what frustrates him is the lack of performance. Don't have the dropout rates. Don't have the decrease in grades. My kids don't have more time. I hear people say, give her more time. My kids don't have more time. Public comments ended after several hours. Then board members jumped in. Where we are now is not new. A lot of the problems that were ascribed to Dr. Simon existed before she got here, and they'll exist, exist afterwards. Simon defended her position. This is a political position, and I've been in education for a long time, and my parents have been in education a long time. And the political world has really caused a lot of damage on education. But I cannot believe you would say, don't take it personally. Because it's political and you made it personal. Despite the big change that happened at Tuesday's meeting, it's all quiet here at the Alachua County School Board office. In fact, it's just like any other day. The future of school board operations is officially out of Simon's hands. Communications Director Jackie Johnson says she hopes the rest of the year will go smoothly. I spoke with Jackie about the decision and she told me the selection of an interim superintendent will be on the agenda for the school board meeting on March 15th. Let us take you through the public history of the superintendents in Alachua County in recent years. In 2013, Dan Boyd served his last year as superintendent. Then, in 2014, Herschel Lyons was named. Owen Roberts took the helm in July of 2014 and led the district until 2016. Later in 2016, Sandy Hollinger became the interim. And in 2017, Karen Clark became the superintendent. You can read more about the story on our website at wuft.org. Our digital correspondent, Will Levinson, compiled an extensive report just for you. We invite you to take a look. Major changes are coming to Florida High School football. The Florida High School Athletic Association passed a plan to split football into metro and suburban divisions. Programs will now be organized by county population instead of solely student enrollment. Eight of the biggest counties in the state will make up the metro division. 
The remaining 59 counties will be in the suburban division. The changes are expected to level the playing field within high school football. The new divisions will place powerhouse schools against each other in the playoffs, giving smaller schools a better chance at making championship games. The FHSAA says it is actively working on the exact details of the change. It says the information will be released as soon as possible. Today, it is the Florida Senate's turn to debate a controversial bill abo regarding abortion. The bill is similar to the Mississippi law being reviewed by the Supreme Court and would ban most abortions after 15 weeks. As drafted, there is no exception for rape or incest. The main exception is if two doctors certify the fetus as an abnormality that is normally fatal. The bill has already passed the House and the Senate could vote tomorrow. The nation is reacting to President Joe Biden's first State of the Union address. The president hit the road today to sell key promises. NBC's Alice Barr reports from Washington. President Biden taking to the road today in hopes of turning a corner after last night's State of the Union address, traveling to Wisconsin to drive home key messages. The State of the Union is strong because you, the American people, are strong. The president led the chamber in a show of solidarity for Ukraine, today signaling Russia could face even harsher penalties. Mr. President, are you considering banning Russian oil imports? Uh, nothing is off the table. The U.S. Department of Justice launching a new task force to uncover the crimes of Russian oligarchs close to President Vladimir Putin. Pressed on the Today Show about next steps, Vice President Kamala Harris stressing U.S. troops will not fight Russia in Ukraine. We're addressing the humanitarian needs as well as the security needs and the economic needs of Ukraine. In an interview with NBC's Lester Holt, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin warning of difficult days ahead and Russia's assault on its neighbor. There's a lot of combat power uh, that the Russians still have available to them. Republican leaders accusing the Biden administration of weakness against Russia. The president articulated no meaningful new steps. No specific plan. Also slamming the president's policies to combat soaring inflation and the pandemic. That as White House COVID advisors laid out a new strategy to prepare for new variants, avoid shutdowns, vaccinate the world, and ramp up treatments, including allowing pharmacists to prescribe on the spot when someone tests positive. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. The weather was gorgeous on my way to the studio today. WUFT's Ashley Weinstein joins us now with the weather forecast. Ashley, will this weather persist through the week? Yes, we are going to see temperatures rise as the week goes on, and we have high pressure that's building stability as well in our atmosphere. Look at outside the studio today. I enjoyed my walk into work today. 78 degrees feels like 75, not a cloud in the sky to spot. And temperatures for the rest of north central Florida near 80, largely 78 in Gainesville, 79 in Ocala, and 77 in Stark. These temperatures are going to continue increasing continue to increase into the weekend and into early next week. Look at that temperature change in the last 24 hours, nearly 10 degrees warmer in most parts of our area. More on what's to come through the rest of the week. Back to the desk. The University of Florida's mobile outreach clinic will expand thanks to a grant for $250,000. The grant from Direct Relief will be used to implement another mobile unit. With this vehicle, UF Help hopes to reach more patients in rural municipalities around the county. Full primary care visits are expected to increase by 30 to 50 a month. We're the mobile outreach clinic, and so any sort of infrastructure that we add is going to be for the purposes of improving our ability to provide effective medical outreach to areas where there are high health disparities. Of the mobile unit is still undetermined. Areas of interest for the new patient outreach are being discussed for Waldo, Hawthorne, and Micanopy. Coming up, the flood of Ukrainian refugees shows no sign of slowing down. Young and old continue to flee the violence from their country. That's when we come back. You're watching First at Five. You're watching WUFT-TV News. 
Developing news about the war in Ukraine. Today, Russia ramped up attacks on key cities and seized a large city in the south. The UN says roughly 800,000 people have fled Ukraine as war refugees. Today's NBC, Jay Gray, had special access to a scene near the border with Poland. Good afternoon, and look, we're in the Prashima train terminal, about three miles or so from the border crossing here. We've been granted special access to this area by the Polish army for what they're describing as a special mission this evening. Come with me, I wanna show you what's going on. This train, 16 cars long, just pulling into the station here, and it's filled with people who have moved from the Odessa region along the coast into Poland, fleeing the violence there. It is filled with predominantly women and children, more than 2,000 children, we are told, and many of those children are orphans. So they are trying to get these kids out and to safety. It's something they've been working on for quite some time here, and it's come to fruition as this train pulls into the station. That's the very latest here along the Poland-Ukraine border. I'm Jay Gray. Now back to you. Apple is halting the sale of its products in Russia due to the country's invasion of Ukraine. The tech giant announced the move today. A statement from company spokesperson Fred Sain said that Apple is deeply concerned about the Russian invasion of Ukraine and stands with all of the people who are suffering as a result of the violence. Apple doesn't have any brick and mortar stores in Russia, but it does ship products to the country through its online store and through partnerships with third party retailers. Apple has also limited the visibility of two Russian news apps to only be visible in Russia and halted Apple Pay capabilities in the country. Aside from a chilly morning, it was pretty warm and sunny today. I know, Samantha. Look at those summer-like conditions outside the studio today. Ashley Weinstein joins us after the break to let us know if this pattern will continue through the rest of the week. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Let's take another look at our campus cam. Beautiful outside, not a cloud in sight. That is thanks to this high pressure system and that's sitting at the surface level. But the reason the temperatures are able to increase the rest of this week and even into early next week is because we also have high pressure at both the mid and upper upper levels of the atmosphere. And what that's doing is compressing air down and allowing temperatures to rise in our area. Right now we're sitting at near 80 degrees for most of North Central Florida, 78 in Gainesville, 79 in Ocala, and 77 in Stark. Again, this week is going to be warm and calm. Again, this high pressure system allowing conditions to stabilize and this dry air is going to make it so we aren't going to be expecting much rain at all this week. It is going to stay relatively dry into the weekend. Now, even though we've been enjoying this warmer weather, it's a preview of summer. We are in a drought right now and desperately do need rain. The Treasure Coast is experiencing abnormally dry conditions along with the First Coast. And here in Gainesville, we're in a moderate drought. So make sure you're watering your plants a little bit extra. Tonight, we're seeing a clear into the evening hours. And for most of the overnight hours, we're not gonna be getting out of the 50s. It will drop into the high 40s early tomorrow morning. But again, we're staying warm and clear. Our dew points are staying low again here in Alachua County, as well as down in Marion County. So again, rain is not on our radar here for the next couple of days. Looking ahead again, it's going to get warmer into midweek as that high pressure builds through the weekend and into early next week. Very pleasant summertime like conditions. Which brings me to my six day outlook where I don't know about you. I know Punxsutawney said six more weeks of winter, but it's looking like summer to me getting near 90 degrees through this week and into early next week. Back to the desk. UF may be approaching its spring break, but two high school basketball teams are hard at work approaching the state championship. I can't wait to see which of these teams makes it to the semifinals. Stay tuned for sports with Lauren Cooney. She'll let you know which two local teams are headed to the state semifinals. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports. I'm Lauren Cooney. Two high school basketball teams from our viewing area will compete in the 1A state semifinals tonight. 
The top seed Hawthorne Hornets will compete against the fourth seed Bradford Tornadoes. Last week, the 11-4 Hornets defeated Trenton 40-39 in their regional finals. The 14-10 Tornadoes took down Madison County by a score of 64-54. The winner this evening in Lakeland will play for the championship against the winner of Malone and Paxton. The Santa Fe College men's basketball team is set to compete in state tournament action as well. The 24 and 5 Saints are making their first appearance in the tournament since 2013. They have received a slew of awards for their season in their conference. Head coach Chris Mowry was named the Central Conference Head Coach of the Year. Freshman Bradley Douglas was named Player of the Year. He's joined on the conference first team by teammates Hassan Abdul Hakim and Brandon Farmer. Mowry says Douglas is the team's leader, even playing all 40 minutes of some games. The guy we can't do without, you know, if, if he's the one guy that we would really struggle to replace if he was not available to us. The fifth seed Saints play tonight in Niceville for the district quarterfinals. They'll take on fourth seed South Florida Southwestern State College. The UF softball team hosts 11-5 Southern Miss tonight. This is the first meeting of the two teams since 2006. The Gators have outscored opponents 46-4 in home games in six games this season. The team is coming off of four wins at the UCF Knights Classic. Freshman Kendra Falby earned her second SEC Freshman Honor of the Week Monday. She currently leads the nation in stolen bases and total hits. She also leads freshmen in runs scored. Tonight's game is at 6 at Katie Cecil Presley Stadium. Across the street at Florida Ballpark, the Orange and Blue will host Florida A&M. The last time Florida played at home, they swept a three-game series against Georgia State. Last night, the Gators defeated the UNF Eagles 11-2. So, they are currently on a six-game win streak. The 3-5 and five Rattlers are on a three-game win streak of their own tonight. Tonight's game starts at 7 p.m. The Florida men's basketball team gets a big win defeating the Vanderbilt Commodores 82-78 last night. This is Florida's ninth straight win over Vanderbilt. The Gators trailed by as many as nine in the second half, but a three-point basket by Flanders Fleming Jr. with six seconds left and two made free throws by Colin Castleton secured the victory. For Senior Day, the Orange and Blue will host the Kentucky Wildcats on Saturday at 3 p.m. On the women's side, the Gators are set to compete in the SCC tournament against Vanderbilt tomorrow. Florida faced Vanderbilt once this season, resulting in a tough road loss for the Gators. The Gators are currently a fifth seed in the tournament and are coming off their first regular season winning since 2014. The 13th seeded Commodores are coming off an 85-69 victory over Texas A&M. Tip-off tomorrow is set for 3.30 p.m. on the SEC Network. The 2022 NFL Combine kicks off tomorrow and four Gators will be participating. Those four are defensive lineman Zach Carter, cornerback Kyir Elam, outside linebacker Jeremiah Moon, and running back Damian Pierce. Bleacher Report has Elam projected as a first-round draft pick in the April draft. That's your look at sports. Now back to the desk. The Alachua County Youth Fair begins tomorrow and will last until Sunday. The fair will take place at the Alachua County Agriculture and Equestrian Center. On Friday, the arena there will be named after former county commissioner Lee Pinkinson. A group of about 30 volunteers work throughout the year to put on the fair. All of the exhibits and shows are free. Before we go, one last check on the weather. I have to throw it back to the campus cam one last time for our show today because it's absolutely beautiful outside. Despite the need for rain, I'm selfishly enjoying this gorgeous weather. 76 degrees, feels like 75. And Again, we're thinking this high pressure system that's also prevalent not just on the surface level but in the mid and high level ranges as well in our atmosphere leading for not only stable conditions but temperatures to build through the weekend into early next week as well. Which brings me to my six day outlook where we could see it's near 90 degrees through the weekend and into early next week. Absolutely gorgeous this week. Back to the desk. Thanks, Ashley. BBC World News is next, and the PBS NewsHour is coming up at 7. Remember, your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.